I fully believe that Goss is the best designed Warframe in the game. And it's not because of his high stats or how good he can be in certain missions or whatever, it's simply because Goss will never age. You see, Goss is built around one simple gimmick, running very fast. This is a niche Digital Extremes Explorer and the concept on paper never sounded anything special. In practice, however, it worked perfectly. Goss's abilities are literally perfect. While sure, you don't really see Goss doing Eidolons or Profit Taker, Goss can do pretty much anything no matter where the game is at. If the meta goes back to defense or interception, Goss will still remain useful. Go back to the AoE meta, Goss will still remain useful. End up in a single target or melee meta, Goss will still remain useful. Find yourself with no friends online at 3am, Goss is still useful. Alone or in a squad, Goss is always useful because he will never age. If Warframe still remains a game in the next 10 years, chances are Goss will still be really good. The main reason for this is because Goss's abilities are rooted directly from the game's fundamental systems. Movement is Warframe. Without it, the game would be entirely different. Movement is a core part of what makes Warframe, Warframe. Every other character is obviously designed around this system, but none never really take direct inspiration from it. If anything, most other characters simply take certain aspects of the movement system while their kit being completely different. Sure, Ember has a wide control ability with fire and heat, but the movement system simply allows Ember to do her thing. Every character is bounded by this fundamental design. Their abilities tend to work together in tandem with the entire parkour. Excalibur being another good example. His slash dash can be used more effectively after a bullet jump or roll into a group of enemies. Goss, on the other hand, takes this rule and uses it as his own. His entire gimmick and niche is running super fast, using the momentum and parkour of the game as his main stick. Every other character takes inspiration and uses the movement with their kit. Goss, on the other hand, is the movement. And on paper, this sounds really awful. Why make a character that is just movement? Shouldn't we make Goss do something else? Something more impactful? Volt is fast, but Volt is a caster character that offers a lot of crit and electric damage. Titania is also fast, but has her pixie form to deal damage. With Goss... Well, it turns out... Movement is all we really needed. Goss's passive is a bit of a doozy. Almost feels like I'm reading a League of Legends ability. To achieve supersonic speed, Goss draws upon his energy reserves and his state-of-the-art electrokinetic battery to feel his abilities. Goss has access to 80% of the battery in his default state. Activating red line grants access to 100% of the battery. The battery displayed as a gauge meter above his ability icons acts as a secondary resource that charges or drains depending on the ability he uses. The general passive he gets from his battery is as follows. You gain 0.5% battery per meter Goss traverses. You lose 3% battery when Goss falls out of bounds, and you lose 15% of the battery per second if Goss stands in a nullifier bubble. When using Goss's first ability, Mock Rush, you gain 10% battery on cast and also gain an additional percent for each enemy hit from Mock Rush. When using Goss's second ability, Kinetic Plating, you lose 1% battery per second while it's active and lose 1.5% to 5% when getting hit. However, you gain 0.25% battery when you melee enemies. When using Goss's third ability, Thermal Sunder, you gain 10% battery when casting Cold, and lose 10% battery when casting Heat. And when using Goss's ultimate, you lose 2% battery per second while below 100% total battery. And after Redline expires, the battery drains to the amount displayed on Redline's counter. For example, if the battery is at 20%, it will decrease to 20% after Redline is over. For every point of battery gain, Goss gains bonus shield recharge rate and shield recharge delay reduction. This stacks to a maximum of 120% recharge rate and an insane 80% reduced recharge delay if the battery is full, thus making this the strongest shield regeneration passive in the entire game and is much more stronger than Arcane Aegis. At maximum battery, Kinetic Plating also gains an astronomical 100% damage reduction. The battery also affects the damage and status duration of Thermal Sunder. And lastly, the battery affects the fire rate, attack speed, reload speed, and holster speed boosts under redline. Goss also gains special effects from Thermal Sunder when above 80% on the battery and while redline is active. Already, Goss's passive is much more intricate and thought out before we got to any of his abilities. Who knew a character designed by the gimmick of running fast was so complex and deep? The great part about Goss's passive is that it isn't just a flat or static passive. This is a passive that is retroactively applied to his abilities and will define his gameplay. There aren't many passives like this. In fact, Goss is the only one with a true passive 
that actually works into his kit in an organic and healthy way, whereas most other characters just gain a slight damage boost to weapons or status resistances. To some extent, you can consider this an actual ability, a fifth ability per se. Goss's first ability is Mock Rush, and it's the ability that ties his entire theme and kit together. Mock Rush is the fastest sprint ability in the game. No, I don't mean speed boost, obviously Volt and Titania are way faster, but those characters are fast because of their speed buff, not a sprint ability. Mock Rush is a sprint ability. Goss charges himself up and runs super quickly in a near straight line, although you can make wide turns and curves if you can. If you come into contact with an enemy, they will get knocked over. If you connect with an object or a wall, you crash, creating a shockwave that knocks down enemies nearby. Mock Rush, alongside just moving, is one of the main ways Goss can build up the battery. Mock Rush can be toggled off so you can control how fast you go, so the ability isn't actually that gimmicky when you're using it in tight hallways or corners since you can actually stop the ability before crashing into a wall or geometry. It also allows Goss to traverse larger tile sets pretty easily. You can also run on water on Cetus or Valus. Kinetic Plating is Goss' second ability. Kinetic Plating allows Goss to create an armor that scales with the battery. It converts physical damage such as IPS, heat, cold, and blast damage into energy. Goss is also protected from staggers or knockdown, meaning Goss doesn't actually need prime sure-footed. The damage reduction scales off the battery, and at max redline, Goss takes zero damage. Goss also gains a melee damage bonus when this ability and redline are active. Kinetic plating is quite literally iron skin on drugs, except you don't have to worry about building up its health since it has none. Kinetic plating is solely duration based, and while the DR scales with strength, you will get 100% at full battery anyways. Thermal Sunder is Goss's third ability, and it's also his subzoom, meaning if you want to take an ability from Goss and transfer it to another character, it would be this one. Thermal Sunder has two mechanics. When tap casting the ability, Goss creates a large field of cold ice that charges the battery up by 10%. When hold casting the ability, Goss creates an area of fire which deals heat procs to enemies and also drains the battery. However, once you're at max battery with redline, there is no drain. As is, Thermal Sunder is really good as you can spread elements in a wide radius so quickly, so it makes melee builds even stronger. Spreading heat is also a great thing to have as heat itself is a really strong element, so Goss can effectively armor strip in a wide radius. Another neat thing about Thermal Sunder is that if you combine the cold and heat radius, you can turn the ability into a blast damage, which depending on the cast order, can spread enemies outwards or vacuum them in. This ability alone makes Goss so much more valuable than he realistically should be, as Thermal Sunder is extremely powerful against all factions in almost every game mode. Plus, it's a super easy way of building up your battery to 80% without having to use Mock Rush or Move, so on slower game modes like Interception or Defense, Thermal Sunder is still incredible. And finally, Goss's ultimate... Redline. Goss goes overdrive and cranks his battery up to the max, allowing the player to build up an additional 20% on the battery, thus filling it up to 100%. Redline on its own offers a variety of boosts that all increase Goss's total DPS. These boosts include a fire rate buff, an attack speed buff, a speed buff, casting speed buff, and a reload speed buff, as well as a holster speed buff. Once the battery reaches its base limit at 80%, while Redline is active, it will gradually build up the battery to 100%, but at 100%, there will be zero drain until Redline is over, meaning the battery drain from Kinetic Plating and Thermal Sunder are gone during the state. When Redline is at max, Kinetic Plating gains its 100% damage reduction for the entire duration of Redline. Thermal Sunder also gains bonus effects, as the cold cast from Thermal Sunder freezes enemies completely and the heat procs deal full DOT against enemies. The blast proc also permanently armor strips if you choose to fuse the two casts. I must say, Redline is completely busted, as this ability allows Goss to go from a pretty good Warframe to a Warframe that is literally invincible with the buffs other frames can only dream of. Harrow needs to cycle his abilities and sacrifice his shields to gain his buffs, before his squad decides to delete the platoon of enemies. Nidus has to build up his mutation stacks before he can get the ball rolling. Octavia needs to shoot and jump on the beat to get her damage boost going. But Goss? Goss just has to press redline 
and run. That is insane. For many people, Goss literally changed the entire game. Seriously, you go from having a relatively set standard of characters who all have roles and requirements, to Goss, who just runs faster than 70% of the arsenal and has an invincibility period and gains buffs to his entire loadout, all for running. And it gets even better with Arcanes, as if you want more damage or fire rate, that's an even bigger boost. Goss also got an even stronger buff in the form of Archon Shards, I mean it just keeps on getting better and better. Goss can take any weapon and make it usable. While maybe not level cap or high steel path usable, he can still take around 80% of the entire arsenal and make it work. His buffs are that valuable, and already powerful guns become complete slaughterhouses in the hands of Redline. Melees are also astronomically strong now, as you don't need to slot two attack speed mods, as Goss just gives a melee free attack speed, so melees under Goss will do even more damage. Listen, I will go even further, okay? Let's look at the entire list of missions Goss can actually effectively do. Captures, exterminates, rescues, mobile defense thanks to Thermal Sunder, defense, interception, sabotage, salvage, survival, disruption, excavation. He's even stronger under the conjunction survival buff, and he's great for Archon hunts thanks to kinetic plating. I mean, even when it comes to short missions, he's still really good as Mock Rush is still a very viable sprint ability. Being able to traverse terrains and tile sets quickly is still valuable, and you can make use of Thermal Sunder and Redline on short fissures. Sure, Goss can't do Eidolons or Profit Taker, as well as other characters like Volt, but that is two activities in the entire game that Goss is not good at doing. And it gets even better. While Mock Crash isn't as useful of an augment considering Thermal Sunder can do the same thing, Thermal Transfer on the other hand is insane. Oh my god, as if it couldn't get any better, DE just said, yeah why not, let's give Goss even more damage. And wanna know what's even better? This scales with duration and strength, and it's a sub-zoom, meaning every other character in the game can use this augment. Unreal. I also forgot to mention that Goss's weapon synergy is also incredible. I mean, you can take some of the strongest weapons in the game, like the Tenet Plasma or Kuva Tonkor, and absolutely shred anything in your path. I honestly cannot believe how good Goss is. Like seriously, someone at Digital Extreme said, hey, look, Let's give this guy a speed boost, let's give him invincible armor, let's give him large AoE elemental spread, and give him free DPS boost. And the only requirement from the player is to just f run. That's it. And sure, you could make the one argument that there's just one tiny downside to Goss, and that is that his farm can be a bit of a pain, but like, you're farming the best endless mission in Warframe. Sure, his drops may be a bit frustrating. But that is a very, very, very tiny cost to pay for, considering there are far other worse offenders. Goss is incredible. Goss is the best designed Warframe I have seen in this game. Goss has one of the best subzooms in the entire game, and I am so ready for Goss Prime next summer. If you don't already have Goss, I highly suggest farming for him. He is a complete joy. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more in the future, then be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you guys next time. Peace.